Hello, and welcome back to Minecraft How To. Just checking up on the end of the quarry, which I've really run between the episodes. And we've got a bit of a water problem, so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Um, just so we can have a look, a better, much better look at what's actually going on here. And so I'm just using a open box sponge to clean it up. Which is a really good, quick way of cleaning up things, and it's a... In a wand form, which is really nice. Allowing us to easily clean up the mess that our quarry has made. I did say of course in the last in the last episode that the end of quarry should be used without the wheel hook I grow, but I forgot to take it off. But as you can see it does make quite a big hole. We've got ourselves a nice collection of ores, as you see in the chest here. Of course, we've got no way of getting those back currently. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to the main base and show you what the different methods are for transporting them. The first thing we're going to look at is an ender chest. Yep, the ender chest. Plain old vanilla ender chest. As I'm sure most people know, the vanilla ender chest allows you to place your items into a chest. So in this case we have one piece of cobblestone and it shows in both ender chests. If I was to place say nine in there, it would also be in the other ender chest. This, however, is limited to the current player, and there is no way of inserting items into these. However, there is a mod called Ender Storage, which provides a very a different version of these chests. So we'll go up here. And we will pull out the ender chest. So, in this case here, we could place an ender chest here, and an ender chest here, and you'll see that placing items into the ender chest, much like a normal ender chest, will allow them to be accessed from both sides. So two there, take those out, and it will be taken out of there. The ender chest also, these ender chests also have a kill feature, in that you can color, you can have different chests for different purposes. So, if we were to say put this obsidian into here, and now we were to color this. Uh, with dye, red dye. So we'll make the first bar, white bar here a red colour. So now we have a red, white, white in the chest. You'll see that the obsidian is gone. However, over here, this in the chest is still white, 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 and the obsidian is still available. Because these take multiple colours, you can have various combinations. You can have a white, blue, white, or a white, yellow, red, or a lot of colours. And each colour then makes the chest unique. So, once again, place that in there. It will not be available in the white, white, white chest over here. And it will also not be available in a red chest. However, if we make it red, white, yellow chest, which is the same as over there, the obsidian is now available. All of these colours are available to every player on the server. However, you can make a personal colour by 
hitting the lock with a diamond. This will then make the colours once again separate. So placing your obsidian on there will no longer be available in this chest. Do be aware, however, these are still public chests. However, they are just tied to your username, or the username who hit the thing. So this would be a red, white, yellow for NZ hook. Whereas this one over here would be a red, white, yellow public. If someone else was to hit this chest, it would then be a red, white, yellow other person's name. But still accessible by machines and other players who wish to open it. To remove the diamond, shift right click on the lock again. Do note however that you will lose the diamond that you place on it. The cool, another cool feature about these chests is that you can now pipe items in. For example, if we use our 16 obsidian and we, turn, we use the, flux, the item ducts to extract items, that was the rest line, you'll see that the items are now piped into the chest. This allows you, of course, on the other side, to also pump items out of the chest. So we turn our lever on here, and you can see that it starts extracting the obsidian. So if we were to set this up in the quarry world, we could pump the items directly in uh, from the quarry or the digital miner or any other method directly into the ender chest, and then on this side, we could then extract it using any one of our piping methods we discussed in an earlier episode. <coughs> the Ender Chest, the Ender Storage mod also provides a similar concept for transporting liquid. I'm not going to get really deep into this, into transporting liquid, but you can see here that you have tanks, or ender tanks, with the same colouring at the top. These are also not related in any way to these colours up here, but work in the same way. So you can have you could have a red, white, yellow, and it will not be interactive with this. These will also import input and output things automatically based on the direction of the ender tanks cylinder at the front which you can change by right-clicking. You, uh, you can pump liquids in and out of these very easily, allowing for cross-dimensional liquid transport. The next mod we're going to look at is from Ender.io. Ender.io provides a reasonably easy to craft block. However, it does require the collection of an Enderman. However, if we were to place these two here, you can see when right clicking on the block, you are given this very complex interface, which you would have seen me using in the previous episode. You do, however, need to give it power, as shown by the, set, uh, the local buffer and the send receive buffer, and, uh, but you can use power from another location. For example, if I click receive, you can now see it has re, uh, receiving power by the little purple indicator in the middle. It also shows in the local buffer that it has power. It has an internal buffer of items that are sending and items that it's receiving. 
much like the other indoor RO machines, you could choose your directions to pull, push, push and pull in order to connect to the pipes. So we don't need to actually set up piping such as this. You can set up filters for what items to be able to be sent and items for what to be received. As I've discussed, you can use power. To set up a channel, you have two modes. You have a public channel, which everybody can use, and a private channel, which only you can use. Entering a name, for example, let's call this test power. Clicking plus will add it to the available channels section. If, you're pro if it is a private channel, it'll be shown with an icon here. You can choose to send and receive, and you can uh, also have multiple different power sources going in and out at the same time from the same device. It also has the ability to transmit items on this tab here, and the interface works exactly the same as for power. So if we go test items, we could set public or private. We could then set this to send. And if we go over to here, we can set this to, once again, receive power. So that we actually get some buffer. If we go back to our items, we can now say to receive items. And any items that are sent into the machine, into the device, for example, let's place our obsidian here and turn our lever on. You will see them pop up briefly in the send area. Obviously, if no and nothing is taking them out, you won't see them. But over here, you will now see them in the received section. We could configure this to output or to push, and it would push it into the connected inventory, which in this case is the pipe. Or we could set it to none or leave it at none. and use a transport method using one of our piping methods we can now extract for example but it is much faster in this case to just push this device also allows for transporting liquid in exactly the same way you enter your device in you move it to your send or receive. And it also supports the ability to transport rail cars, but I won't go into that. If you find that you are needing uh, that you no longer require frequency, select the frequency in the available and press the delete channel. So that is the dimensional transceiver which keeps its settings when you break it. One of the more common blocks to be used for interdimensional tra um, item transportation is the Tesseract. The Tesseract works like many other blocks in that you give it a frequency so in this case, we'll give it frequency number one, which must be a number. You can name them, so we could go items. You are, however, limited on sending all your item, uh, uh, power and everything on one channel only. You could configure it so that you have items being received, fluid being received, or energy being received. 
You can click these so it is send and receive, blocked or send only. In this case, we're going to see them as receive only. You can control the redstone by having it on, off, or low or high. It gives a little bit of information about the block and a quick tutorial about the block itself as well. The Tesseract is provided by the mod Thermal Expansion. So, we'll go over here. We do the same configuration here. We select the previously saved previously. We click on it. Then click the set frequency tick mark, which will make it active. You can unset or disable the frequency by clicking the X. And you can remove the frequency name by clicking the minus. Note, this will not deactivate the channel. It will just remove it from the list of frequencies available. We also, in this case, because we are sending the items, need to change the mode to item mode send, or send and receive. We're not transmitting a fluid or energy, so we don't need to change these settings, but you can if you need to. Now, if we were to place our obsidian in here, it'll be extracted, and if we watch over here, it'll instantly be ejected into the pipes. The Tesseract by default is a public device. There is a private version by changing, a craft, by changing the crafting recipe for the Tesseract. Tesseract. This, as shown in NEI, the security crafting indicates you need a signalium security lock surrounded by signalium Nuggets. This will make it the ability to have a private tesseract, which can only be used by you, or in protected mode, by other people that you trust. These are the main mods that are provided in most mod packs that you can use for transferring items large distances, or even into dimensions. There are other mods available in some packs, which may be may have similar functionality or alternative methods that allow you to transfer items using piping systems. But for now, let me go off and set up the mining world so that it will mine and send items back to our base so you can see it in action. Okay, so I've set up another cop another ender quarry. Uh, just to mine up this little area here. To give it power, I've used the dimensional transceiver. As you can see, set the receive power. It's set, uh, set to send test items, which we set up earlier. And you can see, it's powering through the items in here. If we return back to the main base, You can see that the power is coming from here, which is our main 
which is where I've been getting the power from for the previous few episodes. And it is set to send power. The items, however, are set to come in down here. In this location. The items are set here. We are set to receive power from the one above. And the items are set to receive test items from here. And you can see that our logistics chassis of the extractor module is pulling it the items out and sending them down to the chests. I did say in the previous episode we would start filling up these chests. Well, as you can see, they're filling up now. Now that we've got that working, I'm going to end the episode here because we've got all the items from our quarrying systems coming back to the base. Allowing us to craft up many more things in modern Minecraft. But if you enjoyed or found something of use in this video, please leave a like. If you want to be notified of future updates to this series, or follow along with other series that I do, do press the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please leave a comment. Otherwise, see ya!